Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Art Whisperer 88. On your screen you will see my uh, sketchbook and I made a very simple diagram of uh, a circle and two curved lines. Uh, they're really three circles, it's just that the rest of the circle it goes outside the picture plane but this is a very simple layout of what I plan for my next print and maybe it could be a series of prints with uh, variations of this theme so I'm presenting a very simple layout of a design that can be repeated in a suite of prints and um, just to take advantage of the uh, registration bars so I can make um, you know two three four or five uh, similar prints of, of the same theme so anyway, uh, so here's the uh, basic design. And uh, I have here uh, some phthalo blue. This is Blickrylic. And I'm going to do the uh, circle. Like so. Okay, that's a very um, bold but very simple design. And uh, this, so this will be the first layer. And in order for this to work, I'm going to air dry this. Uh, so I have my uh, small fan off, off camera. So, this will be my first step, is to get this to dry, and then I will apply a successive layer of color. Um, I haven't decided yet what color to use. Uh, I might use parchment, or a pale yellow, or like a caramel color. Uh, I'll see what, uh, I'll see what the piece will tell me uh, what it wants. So uh, let this air dry for a few minutes and I will be right back. Okay, it's been a couple of hours and the uh, first layer has dried completely I'm glad to say and so now my next step is to charge the plate with a second layer and uh, I think I will be a little bold and use vermilion this is artist loft vermilion it's going to be a nice contrast to this. Uh, this is Stalo Blue, by the way. And this is my brand new tube of Artist Loft. Okay. And one of the advantages uh, of this smaller plate is I really don't need to use that much paint. Um,
So this uh, application of the second layer is very, very thin and very even. So hopefully this will activate the uh, dried up phthalo blue that's underneath. Okay, let me just clean up some of them. Mess here. And let's see, let me just do a close up so you can see this in better detail. Um, again, I'm going to do my scribble work, very important. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm leaving this for uh, about 15, 20 minutes and I will be right back. Okay, it's been about almost half an hour and uh, let's see what we got. I think the uh, result is very interesting. I think this is very cool. It's uh, better than I expected because the um, cadmium red is trans semi-transparent. Okay. Let me do a wide shot. In fact, uh, for a single pull, this might be a standalone print. Uh, I may not even need to uh, put any collage on it. So, uh, okay. So this is print number one. I'm, I'm going to keep going 
and do variations of this uh, theme. So uh, I'm going to set this aside as print number one and proceed to do the second one. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm ready for print number two. And I'm going to do this. And again, I'm going to get this uh, dry with my little fan here. And I will be right back. Okay, this has air dried nicely. And I thought I would use aqua green as a backdrop for this. Again, I'm doing my best to make this very thin and very even uh, because I think by having it on the thin side, it will help to lift the uh, initial paint to, to transfer. Okay. Let me do my obligatory scribbles. Okay, so I'm going to wait for about 15-20 minutes. Um, I know the process is a little slow, but uh, I think by doing this, by waiting, you make sure that the image transfers properly. 
So I'm taking a short break again and I will be right back. Okay, it's been about 15, 20 minutes. Let's see what we got. Well, I think this is very interesting. I have to be really careful because this is a thinner paper. But I think the result is very cool. Middle white shot. I like the uh, I like the texture of the brush work and I think the scribbles work very well too. So this is print number two of a series. So let me put this aside. As you can see it's kind of soaked the paper so the paper is a little damp. So I'm, I'm going to head on to the third print. Again, I'm going to do a variation of the basic layout of a circle and two lines. and wait for this to air dry. So back in a few minutes. Okay, back from a break and this has dried pretty much. Uh, there's like a little drop here that is wet. I'm going to have to soak it up with tissue so it doesn't make a mess. Okay. So now I'm going to use a bright yellow
Okay. We put some marks here. Mark there. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, there's not as much contrast because the yellow and the white of the paper it, it's very close in in intensity but I do like the texture of the uh, brush marks and I like the intense contrast of the yellow and the yellow blue in fact the combination of it makes this certain parts look like a, a deep green, like an emerald green. So let me do a close up. Okay. So this is print number three. And let me just keep going. Okay, I am continuing the variation of my theme here just to refresh your memory. I'm going to show you the, uh, the general layout of, of the artwork, a circle with two lines. So we'll do my circle. and the two lines. Okay. Again, I will air dry this and I will be right back. Okay, this has air dried for about 20 minutes. And I'm going to use my Artist Loft Green Yellow. Brand new. I think I got a good price on this from Michael's. I think it's something like $4 and change for a tube. And uh, I do like the consistency of Artist Loft. It uh, is very creamy and it has good coverage.
use uh, my freshly washed brayer. I've made it a habit now like after I do a printing I go to the sink and soak this so it's much easier to clean rather than wait and once the paint dries it's very hard to clean I mean not very hard but why make it hard on yourself when you can let the uh, water and detergent do the work for you. Okay. See, this is what happens when you have a little drop of the first layer that is wet. Uh, I tried to, to mop it up with tissue, but it's still smearing. But it does leave an interesting trail. Um, let me do my marks. I think this uh, green yellow print will be the last of the series of this uh, circle and line thing. And uh, at the end of this video, I will show you all the prints from the first one to the last one so you can see the variation okay let's see what we got Okay, there's some interesting effects here with the scribble. Kind of like the paint peeled off. Let me do a close shot. There's enough contrast that you can see the scribble marks. Uh, because the scribble marks expose the white paper underneath. So it creates a uh, there's a uh, contrast there with the color and the whiteness of the paper. So I'm going to let this air dry because it's still a little damp. And I will show you the results of the other, the other prints. Let's see, I have one, two, three, four. There are four prints in all with all different background colors and uh, 
Okay. Okay, just to recap, since my uh, printing table is not big enough, I'm going to have to uh, show you these prints one by one, uh, not simultaneously. So here's the first print with a red background. Here is print number two with the teal or turquoise background. Here is print number three with a bright yellow background. And here is the last one. Number four with the lime green background. Okay, last minute decision. I decided to go through my box of scraps and see what I might add to this piece um, and I found these guys this is copy paper with some uh, lines that I drew with the paint program on the computer here's some tissue with some permanent marker and some scribbles on this is brown tissue paper I think it would look good here so let me go ahead and mount these Now, since this is brown tissue, there's going to be slight contrast with the background color, which is okay. Because it seems like the white tissue completely disappears when I apply the uh, Mod Podge on it. Okay, there we go. That will be my first collage of the series of four. So I am working my way backwards. So this will be green. Um, let me just make sure this is flat. Because sometimes the uh, paper buckles or there are bubbles okay I'll set this aside and let this dry and 
I'll be working on this piece. I think this will look good. It'll look good here. I always try to balance out some empty spaces with some elements. Maybe some circles up there. Some scribbles down here. Okay, this is a collage number two, it's the yellow one. Again, I will put this aside to dry. a nice contrast of stripes. Let me see if I can There and then maybe just a
Yeah. Yeah. So this is the turquoise piece. And lastly, Okay. Okay, that is the last of the series of four. And 
Again, I will air dry this. I'll wait for all four of them to be reasonably dry and then I will present them one by one as a grand finale. Okay, it's been um, a few minutes and the print has dried. The uh, collage has dried nicely. Uh, since my table is not big enough to show these all at once, I will do them one by one. So this is the first print. Here's the second one. Here's the last one of this set of four. And here's a wide shot. I hope you enjoyed this uh, demonstration on how to make a suite of prints and collages. And um, I hope it encourages you to do your own art, uh, seek out your own style. But I'm presenting these very simple uh, layouts of simple shapes so that it's not so intimidating and anyone can do it. So I hope to see you next time.